Hi, I'm Will and welcome to Hotaru's Lens. Have you ever taken a photo and had something unexpected show up in it? Something creepy? Something that you might even identify as a ghost or a spirit? The Japanese have, and they've taken a lot. My first exposure to Japanese ghost photos was when I was living in Saga Prefecture, Japan. I was watching a variety show on TV and they had a spot on ghost photos which are called Shinrei Shashin in Japanese. One of the hosts was showing photos and the rest were discussing them. I watched with interest because I noticed that Japanese ghost photos aren't like what I was used to in the West. I would say many of them fell into one of two categories. One was where the person in the photo was distorted somehow, where body parts are twisted or elongated or missing altogether. And this is despite the person in the photo being fine and none the wiser until the photo is seen later. The second, no less disconcerting type of photo is one where an apparition makes an appearance. It can be a hand grasping someone. An extra set of feet in the crowd. or an extra face peeking around from behind. Once again, these aren't noticed and everything is normal until it's seen in the photo later. A little time passed and I saw ghost photos mentioned in another program. This made me become a little bit more interested and curious. So I went to a large bookstore and I asked an employee, Sumimasen, Shinrei Shashin Kankei no Hon aru de shouka? The employee's face turned pale and he froze for a moment. Apparently a foreigner asking for such a thing in Japanese is just as surprising as seeing an actual ghost photo. But he knew his store inside out and led me directly to this book. It's called Meikai Shashinkan or Underworld Photo Studio and it contains a compilation of ghost photos submitted by different people. Now, it's an entertainment-oriented book for people interested in this type of thing, so it also contains articles as well as some manga of a spooky and related theme. One of the things I noticed right away about the photos in this book is that many of them fall into the two categories I mentioned before, where the people in the photo are distorted or have missing body parts, or an apparition or part of an apparition makes a rather solid, clear appearance. But also included in these photos are ones that Westerners would recognize as ghost photos. Now, being an avid photographer and having a background in the sciences, I see a few photos in here which I think have a pretty clear explanation, but I'll talk about those in a future video. For now, let's take a closer look. This is a classic example of a distorted or disfigured person in the photo. Um, the child was no doubt fine, however, their hands look strange, as if there's extra fingers or they're wrapped around weirdly. This one is an example of an apparition making an appearance. What looks like a small dark hand can be seen on the neck of the person in this photo who was apparently goofing around with their friends at the time this was taken. This photo was submitted by one of the women in the photo who noticed that her hand looked distorted and weird. It looks like there's another hand and extra fingers on top of hers. The Japanese recognition of ghost photos is not limited to distorted figures or the solid appearance of apparitions. They also take note of foggy and shadowy apparitions in their photos, such as a cloudy looking face where there shouldn't be one, as seen in this photo. This photo is another example of a cloudy type of apparitions face which was noticed by the photographer. 
Also included in the collection of what Japanese recognize as ghost photos are ones a little bit more like we might recognize in the West with strange wispy fog that was not noticed at the time the photo was taken. Less common than is identified as a spirit photo in the West, but still present, are orbs. Interestingly enough, pets and animals are also identified as being affected by spirits in photos. This would be consistent with the Japanese Shinto religion worldview, where nature is inhabited by spirits and they affect many different things. This photo is an example of a person with a body part that has vanished from the photo. In this image, the person on the merry-go-round horse appears to not have a head. After seeing all this, you might ask, why does stoic modern high-tech Japan have so many ghost photos? And why are many of them so distinct from what we're used to in the West? Do Japanese spirits simp simply haunt differently? In order to get a little bit of insight into that, we need to talk about the Japanese native religion of Shinto just a little bit. Shinto is Japan's native religion that's practiced alongside Buddhism. It's a religion of nature where the Japanese believe that spirits inhabit the natural world. It is a doctrine-free religion, which means that there's no central authoritative text, and it actually varies from region to region based on local history and local mythology. The Japanese build shrines to the spirits all over Japan. And these different shrines are get dedicated to different spirits. There are small local spirits, perhaps the spirit of a river that's historically important to a farming community. And then there's also very well-known, more powerful deities that are prayed to all across Japan. Um, the area that I lived in actually had a lot of shrines dedicated to a deity known as Ebisu. Now, these different spirits that have the shrines dedicated to them are believed to be able to affect human concerns in different ways. So some people might go to one shrine to pray for academic success or another shrine to pray for a bountiful harvest or uh, Inari shrines are often gone to to pray for success in business and wealth. Now, here should we get into Shinrei Shashin a little bit. In the, way, in the same way that the Shinto spirits and deities can be prayed to for good fortune, evil spirits are often blamed for ill fortune. You can see the Japanese awareness of these evil spirits quite readily throughout society. Um, if you look at shops, particularly small shops and restaurants that you might find in a small town, you, you'll often find small dishes of salt placed by the entrance. This is to purify and to ward off the evil spirits. You'll also find a lot of normal, everyday Jap Japanese citizens carrying these. They're called omamori, and they're a type of good luck charm that you can buy at Shinto shrines. Um, there's different variations. Some of them say koltsu anzen, which means um, safety in traveling. And others are called mikawari omamori, which means body exchange protectors. Um, and the idea is that they take the attention of the evil spirits and that they take the bad luck, which leaves you safe. If you watch professional sumo wrestling, you'll see the sumo stomp. And throw salt into the ring before a match. This is also to ward off evil spirits. The spirits inhabiting the world and the evil spirits are something that are very present in the Japanese mindset. This can be seen in a lot of movies. There have been a number of films about hauntings. Two of the most well-known are the 1998 film Ringu and the 2002 film Juon, both of which were remade by American producers as The Ring and The Grudge, respectively. I'm not a big fan of remakes, but I thought The Grudge was particularly good. In the movie Ringu, the disturbed spirit of a girl who fell down a well haunts anyone who watches a cursed video. 
A journalist in the movie watches the video, and then she wants to know if she's being haunted. So she asks someone to take a photo of her. Which comes out distorted. This is a perfect example of how the Japanese view and perceive this phenomenon. Now, the Japanese have an affinity for scary and spooky things, as can be seen by their interest in ghost photos. But long before modern cameras brought the Japanese ghost photos, they had another type of artwork that they enjoyed looking at. These were called yudezu. Yudezu were scary paintings and drawings of supernatural beings. They reached their peak popularity during the Meiji era in the 1800s. Yudezu could be quite terrifying images of evil spirits preying on people, or they could be much more subtle and resemble the woodblock prints of the time. There were Yudezu of beautiful women, but there were little clues as to their supernatural nature, such as their bodies fading away. Does that sound familiar? Other Yudezu featured things such as a rooster being held upside down, a sign that morning would not come. Is the prevalence of ghost photos in Japanese society a manifestation of their belief system and their fascination with the supernatural and the creepy? Or is it a manifestation of a greater sensitivity to the natural world around them and spirits that inhabit it? That'll have to be for you to decide. Until next time, Ogenki Day, Mata Kondo.